All right, cool. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and start this thing off. So what I want to do is I, I want to first welcome you. I want to say thanks for actually, you know, taking your time. I know a lot of this, uh, a lot of this is, is, is a lunch hour for you guys. And uh, out on the West Coast, I know it's 9 o'clock in the morning. I know, it's, you know, one of the first things to be doing is watch, <laughs> watching a webinar. But I'm telling you, you're going to get a lot, of, a lot from this webinar. And the title of this webinar is How to Find All the Motiva Motivated Sellers Your Heart Can Desire, Your Heart Desires, actually. And um, <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm a big SpongeBob fan. I have four kids. We sit here and we watch this uh, SpongeBob every day. And uh, I'm ready. So if you can, go ahead and uh, type in your, your question box over there that, that I'm ready. So that way I know that you guys are ready and roaring to go. Let me... So I, I don't know some of the problems that, that you're currently facing. That I, I know some of the problems that, that I was facing. I was just really spinning my wheels trying to find these motivated sellers. I, I, I was doing a lot um, with really no results. And that's why I, with this webinar, I want to you know, help you to, to keep from doing that. Maybe you're, you know, you're in a position where you're talking to a lot of people only <laughs> finding out that they're not deals to begin with. I've been there, done that. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of gurus out there telling you right now that you should be calling ads in the paper, and honestly, I think that's a complete waste of time. You're going to pull your hair out. You'll go crazy doing it. I've done it. I'll tell you a story, uh, what happened to me that kind of made me stop calling these for sale by owners, these FISBOs in the paper. And, you know, maybe you're just not following up with your prospects. So the solution uh, to these problems, I'm going to show you what I'm currently doing in, in my business right now to find these motivated sellers. And I'm also going to show you how to increase your response rate by using direct mail. If you're not using direct mail um, in, your, in your marketing, I really, honest to God, think you're, you're missing uh, the boat with this. Um, that, uh, when I got started, I was doing the same thing. I was calling for sale by owners, wasting a lot of time talking to non-motivated sellers, and I was literally pulling my hair out. With this, uh, with this webinar, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, how to do it, and then I'm going to actually show you how many times you need to be contacting your prospects, i.e. Your, your sellers, uh, in order to follow up with them. Because a lot of these deals, um, a lot of people just do a deal or you know, send out, uh, contact the person one time um, or send some type of direct marketing one or two times. And average is shown, uh, especially with my marketing, my campaigns so that I get back, the response is shown that you need to contact these people at least five to seven times. If you're not, I mean, you're really missing the boat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get into the, uh, into the meat and potatoes. And what I've done is I've just created a, a little simple little mind map. Just to kind of, it's just going to kind of keep me on point, on target, on, on some of the things that, that I want to cover uh, that I think it's really important uh, for you guys uh, to actually be doing in, in your business today. I, I, like I said, I don't know where you are in your business. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of start off with uh, square one. The definition of a motivated seller. Well, my, my, my definition is they have a very strong need or desire to sell, and they need to sell now, today, right this minute. You, if, you, if you've been in this business um, anytime, you, you, you've come across them. You know who they are. The, the people that, that tell you to, you know, uh, you need to come out to the house by 4 o'clock today because I'm leaving. I'm moving to a different state. I don't give a, you know, uh, I don't give, give a crap what happens to this house. I'm done. You know, come over here and I'll sign this deed over to you. You, you know, those, those kind of people, those are the people, those are the motivational, motivational type of people that you're looking for. And some of the characteristics of these, of these motivational people are they're having financial difficulties. Maybe they're facing a foreclosure, bankruptcy, or they've had some type of job loss. Maybe they're moving um, out of town, job transfer, um, or they're, they're getting a divorce. You know, maybe there's been a death in the family with a spouse, with a parent, with a grandparent. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been investing full-time for about, well, going on five years now, and I, I have come across all types of uh, um, situations where, you know, people are selling their properties. And uh, I'm telling you, th this is only the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, but th these are the areas that you really need to be concentrating in, uh, in in order to find these motivated sellers because what, what I see a lot of people do, and that, that what, that's what leads me to the, to the tips section, you know, a lot of the people that I see uh, that I coach, they're trying to, to, to talk to non-motivational non sellers. They're not motivated. You know, you're, you're trying to turn a, uh, a non-deal into a deal, and I think that's what's killing people 
it, it's you're you're going after the wrong person. You you know you're trying to talk to somebody that you you know maybe you called in a uh, for sale by owner ad and this person just actually just listed their property you know a couple weeks ago and you know in their mind they're thinking they're going to get the best for you know the the, the market is still you know, the market is coming up. Uh, you know, they're, they're think that they think that they're going to get top price for their for their house, and that's where you need to educate them um, on the, the, what's going on in the marketplace. But there again, you, you know, you, you can't turn somebody that doesn't want to sell to you because you, you, they have to be some type of some type of motivational there in order to sell. They, you know, you, you can sell it, you can buy it all cash, or you can give them what you're uh, what they're asking, but they have to be flexible on price and terms. So that's one of the big things that I currently see with people that, that I coach. They're trying to make, like it says here, you, you will never convince a non-motivated, non-motivated seller to turn into a motivated seller unless you're willing to pay retail prices for their house. And quite honestly, there's too many houses out there. there there's no reason for you to do that. Now, on the, um, as a little side note, for the uh, retail price, when I get down into um, uh, the, uh, the marketing campaign, the list and stuff like that, you can pay full retail price, if not a little bit more, for a free and clear house. And I'll kind of touch on that a little bit. So let me close this down. And, I, and for me, like I said, it all starts with marketing. Um, I, I guess it was about seven years ago uh, when I started. Well, I mean, I, I've been investing for about, oh, God, I guess it's been about 13 years now. But about seven or eight years ago, that's when I really fully started to do this, uh, this marketing and really, you know, one had one at it full heart. Um, about seven and a half to eight years ago, I met. I called an ad on the paper, and this is some of the stuff that some of these gurus are telling you. Call these for sale by owners, you know, ask them questions, and um, you go over there and talk to them. Well, I'm telling you that I, my opinion that it's the the wrong way to do it. I think you need to be marketing. So when, when about eight years ago, I called this guy, and and I still remember this plain as day. I called this guy in the paper. Um, <laughs> you know, as asking him all those uh, questions that all of us have in order to find their uh, th their true motivation, and you know, the first you know, number one was he he seemed kind of like I was putting in putting him off. It was about nine o'clock at night. You know, I was working a lot of hours. Um, you know, I used to be a, a software um, a senior level architect, so I was putting a lot of uh, hours in. Um, you know, creating this new system, and um, I only had a certain time time frame to call these people, so I called him. The first thing, it felt like I was putting him out. He didn't want to answer the questions. I got down to the questions about, you know, how much you own the property. He just totally went ballistic on me. Um, you know, being kind of, you know, I guess still green, wet behind the ears, so to speak. You know, I, I just kept motoring forward. I, I, I eventually create or set up an appointment with him to, to go out to this gentleman's house. And I go out on one Saturday uh, afternoon. I pitched him. And then all of a sudden, this guy was a uh, was a pretty heavy guy, and I remember him. Uh, he had an oxygen tank on the left hand side of his on his uh, on his on his armchair, and he was smoking with this other hand. And he goes, "Boy, I can throw you out of this house right now. I don't know what kind of you know shyster stuff you're trying to pull here." And I, I, I needless to say, that was the last day that I've ever called uh, ads in the paper. I, I, I just I said to myself, there has to be a better way to do this. And that's where direct marketing comes in. I have never, ever, 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 let me say that again, ever experienced that again to, to this day. Everybody that I speak with, uh, they call me because I am doing some type of direct marketing to them. They get a postcard or a letter from me that says I buy their house, and if they're interested, call me. And the, the secret is I keep following up with them. And that's what leads me to the four M's. Um, if you notice, uh, and now some of you may actually uh, purchase the, uh, the, the Finding Motivated Seller Blueprint report that I created. And I, I'm going to go ahead and update this. And I added another M. It, it was, I was saying, I was talking about the three M's of marketing, but it's really the four M's. You need to have your market, your message, your media, and your multiple hits in order to truly be successful in this business. So your market, let me, hold on a second, let me make sure that, that I'm not missing any, uh, any questions here. I mean, I just, well, I just want to make sure. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is your market. You need to identify the market of what you're, what you're going after. Who's your target market? 
you need to figure that out. You know, the, here are a couple. Here's a couple lists that I personally go after. The one in green, uh, the free and clears, the how to out of town homeowners, to rehab, short sale, foreclosure, lease options. Those are the lists that I work day in, day out. I do not. Uh, I used to wholesale flip. Um, long story short, uh, I would do these deals. I would even have a um, an appraisal done on these flips, right? These these homes that I'm getting getting ready to uh, to wholesale. And it showed I had my contractors. I had two or three contractors go in and give me estimates so that way they know. You know, I didn't take the lows. I didn't take the highs. I took the middle of the, of the rung. And, um, and I presented that to people that I'm flipping to. And on average, you know, I would get about ten to $15,000. And it always seemed like that I, I was getting more, more or less nickel and dime. You know, why are you making $15,000 when all you did X, X, Y, and Z? And, well, the X, Y, and Z was finding the deal, negotiating it, uh, get, getting appraiser out there to appraise it, knowing what my profit spread is going to be if I actually had a close on this deal, because I don't typically look at a, uh, at a house unless I make about forty grand on it. And that way, when I flip it to an, an investor, their profit's going to be anywhere between thirty to forty thousand dollars, depending on what they do. And I was always getting nickel and dime on these things, so that's why I kind of I'm steering clear of the wholesale uh, flip. Um, if you know, if I guess if, if I want to make um, a little bit of money, you know, five to eight thousand dollars. I'll buy a house because when I buy a house, I'll just uh, pull out a little bit of money on the money that I borrow from my private investor, my private lender. I'll pull out, you know, five to eight thousand dollars tax free. So that way, I don't have to pay taxes. You never pay taxes on borrowed money. So that way, I'll just pull that out. I don't typically uh, wholesale flip uh, so much anymore. The uh, the other list, you know, some of the other lists are probate and tax sales. So. You know, figure out who you're going to go after. Uh, like I said, the free and clears, the out of towns, the rehabs, the short sale foreclosures, and the lease options. These are the ones that I that I typically go after. But you know, with these, uh, the free and clears, you're going to have to either have private money or hard money, um, a hard money lender, in order to buy these deals. Uh, like I was telling you uh, before, the free and clears, because there is no mortgage, you can offer uh, these people more or less um, a little bit of a premium on their house. But the catch is it, it's their price but your terms. You have to spread it out over a period of you know, 20 to 30 years. Um, the one deal that I did, uh, I guess it was about a couple weeks ago, um, it's a free and clear house. It's worth about 300000 got him down to $180,000. Um, I was able to structure a deal. He didn't need the money. He needed some more of the uh, um, – because his mom – uh, had Alzheimer's, so he moved her in. So he needed a little bit of a cash flow uh, to help pay for some of these medical bills and, and things like that. So we structured a deal where, you know, I, I actually gave him 190 for the property, uh, principal only payments, and then uh, the house needed about ten thousand dollars worth of work. Didn't really need much. Um, I, the, the, the bulk of it went into the kitchen remodel um, and just uh, fresh coat of paint and a little bit of landscaping. But I, I got this house for 190 thousand dollars, principal only payments. In order to do that, you know, the, the ten uh, thousand, the twenty thousand that I needed, I borrowed from my from my private lender. You need money in order to do this. Um, people are telling you that you know you you don't need money. Well, it's true to an extent. You have to do some type of marketing, some type of advertising. Um, you have to give some money down. Um, I typically only give about twenty. Uh, some cases, at the very most, a hundred dollars to make this make my deals binding. But you do have to have some type of money. The out-of-town homeowners kind of fall in the same uh, category as the free and clears, where you need private money or hard money in order to do this. The rehabs, uh, these are the bank-owned properties, the REOs, the real estate-owned properties. And I, I go after these um, agents. You have to talk to a real estate agent in order to get those. Once again, you need private money in order to do that. Short sale foreclosures, you're going to need private or hard money. Now, lease options, you don't have to typically have any money. And, and, and this list, you know, you target these people um, with double house payments, and, I, and I'll talk a little bit uh, uh, down the um, uh, down in the uh, presentation a little bit more. The wholesale flip, it, no money, but you know, just as a side note, just you know, kind of keep in the back of your mind that you're going to kind of get nickel and dime uh, on your profit, so to speak. I don't, I don't hide hide it from anybody that you know, this is what I bought it for. This is what I have a you know, this is what I have a contract for, and this is what I'm making. You know, I, I'm up front. I try to be honest with them just so they know that there's no uh, misunderstandings later on down the road. 
Um, another list you can go after is probate and tax sales. The same thing with probate and these tax sales. You're going to have to have some money involved uh, in order to go after these people. So what I wanted to do is I just want to show you the list that I typically go after um, whenever I'm looking for, for motivated sellers. And the free and clears, the out-of-towns, the rehabs, the short sale foreclosures, and also the lease options, these are the main lists. That, uh, I'll, and, and also Craigslist and Backpage, but I'll show you that a little bit down, down, the, uh, down in the presentation. This is the list that I go, in, go after day in and day out. I do not work probate, tax sales, um, divorce, bankruptcies, um, you know, God, whatever, tax liens, I don't work them. Um, I know there's other, uh, other people out there that, that suggest that, but this is just me. This is what works for me, and I know it's going to work for you if, if you choose the free and clears, the out-of-town, the rehab, short sales, and lease options uh, in, in order to mar uh, market to. So, you know, the first one, the first M is your market. You know, you need to pick that. You need to figure out who you're going after. The second M is your message. You know, it, it's got to be a message that cuts through all the other, lack of a better word, crap that's out there because there are a lot of other people out there that have the exact same ads that, that you're running. We buy houses. We buy houses cash. And the one that I've found that really works for me is sell your house as is on the date of your choice, at a fair price on the date of your choice. I forgot to add that uh, on a, at a fair price on the date of your choice there. That one is just loaded with benefits, you know, your house as is. They don't have to fix the property up. They can just sell it as is. It's at a fair price. They're going to get a decent price for their house. And one of the biggest ones that I've been finding a lot lately is the date of your choice because uh, with this uh, economy the way that it is, you know, some people um, are, are moving out of state. They, they're getting another job. They're moving closer to uh, family. And they, they need that extra 30, 60, 90 days. Well, you know, I'm there. I'm able to help them. I can do that. So, you know, your message needs to cut through all this clutter. You know, the the we buy houses. Now, that's good for a uh, for for a um, for a bandit sign. But if you have the space to put your advertising, put put sell your house as is at a fair price on uh, on the date of your choice. And what I'm going to talk to you now with this, you'll see the uh, the features and benefits. And I just want to make sure that you guys understand what, what a feature is versus what a benefit is. You know, the feature of a toothpaste uh, is it has fluoride. That is a feature. The benefit of fluoride is it prevents cavities. So whenever you're thinking of something with, uh, you know, any type of advertising that, that you're doing, always think of feature benefits and, um, you know, it, that, that, that'll actually help you sell that property or help you cut through all that clutter that everybody else is, 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 um, is uh, you know, advertising out there. And the, last, uh, the other M is the media. You need to figure out how you're going to actually deliver your message to those people, to that list above here, to, to this market. You know, in my case, you, know, you, you may choose somebody different, but the free and clears and the out-of-towns, that's the list that I market to day in and day out. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what kind of media that you're going to actually um, go to them with. And in, in my example, I love postcards. I've been using postcards. I've tried everything from Post-it notes, the Val pack, um, paper inserts. Um, I, you know, a couple years ago, I did a uh, insert letter into the uh, one of our local papers, and that ran me close to three grand. And now I got I got a deal off of it. I got my money back, but it <laughs> was pretty expensive. And um, but postcards. They're really great because they're referred to as naked mail. Um, you don't have to open them. They'll get them. And I always use the canary yellow. And, uh, and I'll kind of walk through an example real quick um, on how to use clicktomail.com so that way you can use them in, in order to, to mail out the postcards. Um, handwritten yellow letters, I've tried these. I get pretty good results, but honestly, you know, you, you should be trying to save money. Uh, the yellow letters, it, depending on who you go to, um, it, it, it's going to cost you money in order to have somebody, you, you, your handwriting, right, you, you write it on a, on, a, on a piece of paper and then scan it in, or you put it off to a list brokerage, and they do it, but they charge you. So every time you, you take more of those steps away from you, you know, it, it, the, the cost is going to go up. And that's why I love postcards. They're simple, they're easy. I can control it. I can control when these things go out. I can control when I want people to call me. 
Um, you know, it, it's really great. Uh, the post-it notes, you can do post-it notes, you can do door hangers, flyers, um, business cards. You should definitely be passing out business cards. Ads, uh, not so much. Uh, here, in, uh, once again, in the, in the local paper, a Sunday ad is going to run me about $80 uh, for one time placement uh, <laughs> in Sunday, and, and only one day of the week. Um, and I know with the economy, um, the papers are actually, I know here locally, the papers are kind of cutting back, and you just don't see the ads that you once saw you know, about a year or two ago. So I don't think you should be wasting your money with ads. That's just my personal preference. I, if, if you're going to take that $80, $100, I would much rather see you spend it either on postcards or bandit signs. Split it up. Um, bow pack inserts, uh, inserts into your local paper. Like I've said, you know, you, you got to figure out your media, what you're going to actually present them. Uh, in my case, I love postcards. And actually, let me um, hang on a second. I'll show you. I'll show you a postcard that I actually send out here. Uh, documents. And I'll do type. Let me um, watch. You probably won't be able to find it now. Uh, Trying to. I, I thought I had this loaded, but apparently I don't. Um, shoot, I was going to show you. Oh, here we go. Here it is right here. Now look at this postcard that I send out. It's just a simple postcard that I typically send out, and I get a phenomenal uh, response rate with it. I solve real estate problems. Sell your house as is, any condition, any area, all cash or terms. Close, close quickly, no closing costs, no hassles. Right there, no closing costs. I get a lot of the people that I talk to, they're worried about closing costs. Well, <laughs> when you present your, you know, obviously there are no closing costs, but for them, because I've already got it factored into my offer. So, you know, it, it's, it's a big benefit for them. It's a hassle benefit. Close quickly, benefit. All cash. If they want all cash, and sell your house as is, and then my number. I use, um, like I said, I use click the mail in order to send that out, and I get a phenomenal uh, response rate with that postcard. And then the multiple hits, you must hit them at a minimum of five to seven times on anything that you do. Um, even if you call the for sale by owners, which uh, hopefully you will not do that, um, but if you do, um, if you call them, capture their, their mailing address, if it's the same property or if it's something different, capture that and then put them into a, um, some type of mailing sequence so that way you can stay in contact with them and as I got, I have a little note here. If you're not going to do this, you know, don't waste your money. I mean, don't even, honestly, don't even do it. Uh, I'm telling you from experience, this was the mistake that I made was I would send out these postcards, and I would only hit them maybe once or twice. And, you know, I, I, just, I just wasn't following up with them. I, I would get, you know, I, I wouldn't get... I would initially get a response that says, hey, I'm interested in what you're selling. Come over here and talk to me. You, obviously, you've got to pre-screen them. But um, if there's something there, you go over there, you pitch them. Um, but if they're not interested, I would just kind of go, what I used to do is I, I would take that as a no. Well, now, no means maybe. It's just, you know, they're just not motivated uh, enough to sell me their property the way that I want to buy it. So all I do now is I just add them once I talk to somebody. I'll put them into my, uh, my mailing campaign, and then either I would do it or my virtual assistant will, will send off a, um, uh, a postcard once a month and uh, hit them and, uh, and just follow up with them. And like it says there, you need, you need to follow up five to seven times. And now depending on the areas, um, you know, the, the more hotter areas, it's, it's, uh, I, I could typically follow up three to five times, but the more of the... Um, the areas that aren't your typical bread and butter homes, that they're kind of more, not high end, but it's in between, those are the ones that it usually takes me about seven to ten times uh, in order for them to, uh, to actually um, call me back to actually do something. So, you know, just if anything, you know, if you take away anything from, the, from this webinar, you need to follow up. Uh, same thing with your autoresponder. You need to have, if they come, come in via your, your web page, you need to have an autoresponder sequence set up you need to follow up with them. And I'll kind of show you what, what I'm kind of currently doing right now. But um, let me make sure I want to see if there are any questions. Uh, hang on a second. I've got to load all this stuff up. Okay. Um, okay, uh, where do you get your list? 
Uh, why, why don't I do bankruptcies and probates? Uh, <laughs> Richard Roop, yep. Yeah. Uh, that what I do with the uh, the bankruptcies and uh, pro, uh, probates. I don't typically uh, work them, um, you know, just because I, it's just me. You know, it's just a personal preference. Uh, probates number. One, I mean, that, no, there are some good deals. I, I've gotten some good deals from pro, uh, probates. But the thing that I do not like about, about probates uh, is there's always another party uh, that's involved, the brother or sister, or, you know, whoever it is, the executor, the executrix that, that's handling the estate, and they have to get the, uh, the okay from their siblings or whoever. Well, I, I, I was doing one house that was a probate right down the street from me, and I had the other two uh, uh, brothers agree, and the third brother would not agree to my deal at all, no matter... You know, I, I, I even, you know, I even want, because it was free and clear, I was giving them more than what they were asking. And I came out of the pocket a little bit more because I already had somebody um, that was interested in the house um, after I got it fixed up. And um, the third brother wouldn't do it. And still, this was a year ago, and still to this day, that house is still sitting vacant. But I am constantly following up with them uh, at least once a month uh, on postcards. So... Let me make sure. Uh, how many postcards do you send a month? Uh, Loretta, usually from my list, um, now with the free and clears, uh, they don't typically change that much. You'll probably get, um, you know, because I look for properties that are 15 years or older, um, very little uh, mortgage. Uh, Melissa Data can help you with this, and I'll show you this. Uh, Melissa Data can, uh, can factor out refinances, seconds, and things like that, so that way you can really narrow your list. I'll typically send out, um, about 3,000 postcards uh, a month. Now, if you're if you have um, if 3,000 are is a lot. If you know if your marketing campaign, your budget doesn't allow you to do that, all you simply do is you can do one or two things. You can um, uh, break that list up as uh, send out a thousand each month, right? So you know we're January, send out your first thousand. February, send out the second thousand. March, uh, send out the third thousand. Or you can just break them up to 500, 500, 500, 500, 500. <laughs> so you'll hit them as opposed to three months. You'll hit them, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six months. And then six months from now, you'll start the campaign all over again. Because uh, the things that I notice are the free and clears, they do not change quite that bit. And a lot of times, you know, you're, you're, you're marketing to, to, to a list that, they're not really motivated now to sell it, but you know they will be um, at a later time. So, and then the cool thing about it too is you're marketing to a list that that a lot of other investors aren't marketing to. And and like I said, it, it, going back to that uh, hitting them multiple times, five to seven times, you need to hit them. I mean, if, if you're not, if you're only going to mail to them once or twice, you you might as well just save your money. Do not do it. Just call them. Do something else. You you will be throwing your money away. Because um, I was in that boat, and I know from experience that the deals are on the follow-up. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, Brad, uh, how do you send the postcards via a company? Uh, Brad, what I do is I use uh, Click the Mail, and I'll actually I'll show you that um, here in a little bit. And I got a request to put that postcard back up. I, what, what I'll do is I'll throw it back up for you, but I'm going to actually uh, I'll make this available. Can you guys see that? I'll I'll solve. It should be I'll I you know possibly I'll, I'll solve your I, I well I solve real estate problems. Sell your house as is, any condition, any area, all cash or terms. Close quickly, no closing costs, no hassles. Call right now. And then oh, and then here's the front of it. Sell your house today at uh, absolutely no expense to you. Free report reveals I can buy your house and close by next Friday. Uh, by next Friday. You're Larry Hoffman, and then you know no realtors, no closing costs, no commissions, no hassles, you know, and then also put your uh, your website on here because that that's a major proponent in here, um, because what this is is your your postcard is a um, is a is a two step marketing campaign because one step is you can get all your message out on your website. Your website is typically like a one step, you know, because you can convey your entire message, uh, but postcards, bandit signs, ads in the newspapers, that's a two step. What you need to do is you need to either, one, redirect them to a 24-hour recorded message, or two, redirect them to a website. Um, I do one or the other. Uh, I, don't, I don't want them, um, because I, I prefer redirecting them to a 24-hour uh, recorded message, because it has my voice. 
Uh, and I'll show you actually what I'm doing lately with my squeeze pages, which I've been having a phenomenal result uh, with. Uh, but with the recorded message, it, it redirects them, and then it tells them. I, I have the script that I totally read. Um, and, and, and in the script, I make mistakes. I'll say the um and the, oh, shoot, I didn't mean that. And um, it's it just that comes off as being more, you know, genuine, that, that you're not some uh, – High pollutant, you know, uh, million dollar company out to steal their house, and that, that's I, I get that quite a bit. That w when I talk to these people, they just, you know, you sound like an, you know, an average person. I go, well, yeah, I am. It's just, you know, me. I'm just trying to. This is what I do. I buy houses. Uh, if I can buy your house, you know, it's it's a, we can move forward. If not, then you know, maybe I can recommend uh, a real estate agent to you. I, you know, I'm trying to help them uh, to, to to get their property sold. But you know this this postcard, like I said, I have a I have a really good uh, success rate with. And hang on, let me just make sure that I don't have any more questions here before I move on. Did you add more classified lists other than Craigslist? Oh, Laura, no. Right now, um, and Laura, what I'll do is I'll show you um, that real estate software uh, that I created a little bit uh, down the road, and I'll talk to you about that. Yeah, what I'm doing is right now it does um, Craigslist and Backpage. Uh, Kijiji, they keep changing stuff on me, so I have to do some um, some weird things uh, to, <laughs> to the software in order to get to work. And the third issue that I'm running into is because Windows 7, I don't know, um, Windows is good, but I, I, I'm all I, I'm, I've been a Linux developer for years, and I've, I love Linux. And you know, I've just I've never had any issues, quite the issues that I'm having. Uh, with Windows, so um, I got <laughs> I have to figure that out. So, but what I want to do is, uh, before asking you this poll question, you know, here are some of the mistakes that I've made. Um, one is not following up. You know, I, like I said, I would only send one to two mail pieces, and what I found was I was getting a lot of deals after I was send send the uh, the fifth follow up. And, and like I said, that depends on the area, uh, the type of homes that you're going after, uh, the lower end homes. Um, you know, I just looked at one today, and I'll actually show you uh, pictures of it. Uh, the one that I looked at today, I could buy for uh, for two thousand dollars, and it's even for two thousand dollars. I, you know, I, I I told him that you couldn't even give it to me um, because I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll show you <laughs> when I get down there. Um, you know, not having a system in place, a website, you know, with autoresponders, and then also a twenty-four hour recorded message. You know. That that's that's one of the number one mistakes I see people make is you know they're they're getting these leads. I I, I was the same way. You know I, I would get these leads, and then I would have them. I would have them twenty or thirty or forty of them on my desk, and then I you know I would I wouldn't keep my desk clean, and then it would get inter intermingled with everything else, and then something else would come on, and a new lead would come out, or a new real estate course would come out, and then everything else was on hold. You know, and that's one of the. Uh, you know what I was saying with the uh, the mistakes. You know you got to have systems. You got to have um, um, things in place to where you, you you essentially need to take yourself out of the equation. And that's why you know having a virtual assistant, or even if, even if you can, if if you're in a position where you can hire maybe one person, you know, like a couple hours a week um, to come in and help return these phone calls and help organize you. That that's going to make you better. You know, and that that was the mistake that I had. I was getting all these leads, but I was just I wasn't following up with them, or I would follow up with them, and then I would forget to follow up with them on the second, the third, the fifth time. You know, you you need to hit them, and you you need to keep hitting them. And then, like I said, trying to do it all yourself. And then, the last mistake I made was well, this was actually the first one, calling the for sale by owner ads in the paper. Um, I like I said, this is just my own personal preference. I know other people. Um, other gurus are talking, uh, preaching about calling the ads. I, <laughs> I just know from my own personal experience, I, I literally uh, would pull my hair out after I would speak to about 10 or – now, now if, if you're on a budget and you don't have any marketing money to do it, then you know, you know, by all means, you've know, you, you got to do what you've got to do in order to get deals, call ads, signs, business cards, flyers. I mean, hell, when I, when I didn't have any money – I would, that's why I developed that software, and I'll show you that. Um, I developed that software because I didn't even have the two nickels to rub together um, in order to do my, uh, my, my marketing. But what I did have was I had the, uh, the knowledge of how to develop software to go out and email, you know, find these leads off of Craigslist and Backpage and email these people. So, you know, 
you just need to follow up with them, you know. And, and like I said, uh, I would much rather see you spend your money on a direct marketing campaign uh, as opposed to calling ads in, in paper, in the, in the paper. So let me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys a, a poll here. I want to make sure. Um, let me see here. I'm going to launch this. Uh, and what it says is, you know, are you currently using direct mail in, in your business? It should say in your business today. And, you know, so far um, I got a couple people that answered yes. So I'm going to leave it. Okay, here we go. 43% uh, says yes. Wow, 38% says yes. 63% say no. Man. Let me, I'll leave this for, uh, for another few seconds. I'll let it go up. Uh, I'll go up what, about four more. Three. Okay, come on, guys. This is going to be the. Uh, keep clicking here. Now, I mean, be honest. You know, if you're not, then that's fine. You know, I, I just want to. I want to make sure. You know, that that's what this webinar is about. I want to make sure that 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 you are doing it. So. What I have is I have 38% here. I actually shared the results with you. Hopefully you can, uh, let me see if I, uh, it says 38% say yes, and then 62% say no. So that's, I was expecting it to be a little bit higher, um, honestly. Um, with that, that, that's okay. Um, so what I, hopefully what you'll get out of this webinar is, you know, to, to do more direct marketing. So I'm going to go ahead these results and then pop these back. So let me uh, make sure that my audience view. Okay, so everything is is back up. So now, who do you need to target? Uh, what I've done is I've cre I I've broken it down into area and then the list and tips and stuff like that. So the areas that you need to do that I found that works the best is is if you pick three to five zip codes in your farm area. Because you know, if, if you just choose one area, it's probably not big enough. Um, it, you, you need to have different areas. And I, I honestly think you should have at least five areas uh, that you constantly farm. And, and you know, how far should you go out? You know, go out as far as need be in, in order to make a deal. I, I don't want you to have to travel two or three hours just to do a deal. Um, but I mean, hell, if that two or three hours out is going to net you, you know, fifty to sixty thousand dollars, by all means, I, I I would drive it. <laughs> I would have no problem driving it. Um, but if you notice that your area is pretty big, uh, what you can do is you can break that down into a carrier route, and so your zip code, and then those zip card codes are further broken down by carrier routes. So that way, you can actually get down to the streets that your mail that your mail person actually delivers your mail to. And some of my zip codes that I market to, I have to do that just because my area is big, and and the way that the um, uh, the way that the area is, you know, one part of it is, is a declining area, and the other part, like the uh, the south of, of the one area, this basically it's like a road. Um, the south, the southern part of that is the declining area, and the northern part of that is is a is a is a pretty good area with a really great Oak uh, Oak Hill School District uh, school district. Um, so I tend to fo focus in that area and, and hit that area heavily. And I know, I know when, when a house comes up, I know if it's a deal. Um, I don't have to go back and research anything. I know. I know for the price. I know I can I don't even have to see the house. Um, I, you know, as long as I have the street and an, an, an understanding of how many bedrooms and baths, I, you know, I know the general layout of it just because of the houses that I've been through. And if you're not at that stage, you'll get to that. I mean, it's just a matter of time, uh, just walking through houses. The list that I go after, like I said in the beginning, are the free and clears, the out-of-town homeowners, the REOs. These are the uh, uh, the real estate owned, the expired listings, and the 30 day, 30, 60, 90 day lates. Now, these are the ones that I go after for uh, for foreclosures. So, I'll just start now. Before I actually show you this, I'll, and then the other ones are probate, divorces, bankruptcy, and tax liens. Um, you know that, like I said, this is just a personal preference that I, I don't do. Now you can, um, you know, my, my probates and my divorces and my back bankruptcies um, and my tax liens. Uh, we have a, a, a court paper uh, that comes out that you know I, I believe it's um, God ten dollars, nine dollars a, a week or ten. I, I forget exactly what it was, but I, I belong to that. And what I was noticing is I would get the paper. And 
uh, it, it was just kind of I, I wasn't really looking at it. Then they then they posted it online. So what I did was I actually wrote a program that interface with their with their software and it would pull these leads out for me um, and I would go after these probates and divorces but even that there was a, there was always something that they would change the system and something would break and I would always have to go back in and modify the software so I just got tired of it I just didn't want to fool with it anymore and the list that I typically work and I have a really good success rate is you know the free and clears the out-of-town homeowners now the REOs um, you have to ask a real estate agent for, um, or if you have access to the multiple listing service, or you can go to Realtor.com to get that. Um, I believe it, it. I haven't been to Realtor.com in, in a while. Um, I, I, I sometimes I go there just to kind of see, you know, what the market's doing. But like I said, I, I farm my my five zip codes, and I I know uh, pretty much what it's doing, where I am. Um, but in order to get these lists of REOs, go to your agent and just you know befriend one. Just you know. Uh, Call up one. What I did was, uh, there's a, every area has a top listing agent. You know, I would call that person and uh, offer to take them out to lunch and just say, you know, I'm looking to to work with you. I'd like to get a list of the expired listings if you wouldn't mind sending those over to me. And then any deal that I get from it, and I go after lease options for them. And then any deal, any money that I get from the non-refundable option consideration, I'll give you 25 percent of. And, and I do so. Uh, if they don't have time, then I would just you know, ask them, ask him or her, do you have, do you know any other agents that would typically would work with other investors? And um, you know, there's been a couple times where the top agent didn't have the time um, to do that, but he would uh, he actually referred another agent to me, and I've been working with this agent for the last five years. So and you know he's become a really good friend, and we've done a lot of deals, and he actually became one of my uh, private lenders that loans <laughs> loans me money on my real estate transactions. So, you know, just, you know, talk to them. Uh, same thing um, with, uh, with the rehabs. You, know, you have to ask them for a list. Now, the 30s, 60s, 90s, uh, the out-of-town homeowners and the free and clears, you can go to melissadata.com, and I just clicked on it. And what you can do is you can do a uh, mailing list search. Click the mailing. And usually when I'm recording, it takes a little bit of time here. You know, you could do a saturation email, new movers, consumers, occupants, business, new homeowners, property owners. That's what you want right there. And then in this list, you can go in here and get list count, and then you can actually start going in and, uh, and fine-tuning. Um, here is absentee owners. Look at that. Boom. You click that, and that's going to give you a list of all the absentee owners. And you can go into the property demographics for the age of the property, uh, for mortgages and stuff like that. So you can actually get those lists. And the same thing, Melissa Data can give you the 30, 60, 90 day lates. Um, now I don't know if there's a link still up there, but anytime when you get Melissa Data, what I would suggest is I would call one of their representatives and talk to their salespeople because they're able to go in and manipul manipulate that data a little bit more than you can um, from that website. Another one I found is listsource.com. I haven't used them. Um, I, I signed up for uh, for Sales Genie, but with SalesGenie.com, they they require you to pay $175 a month. And you know, with my free and clear list, the out of town homeowners, they don't typically change that much, and I just can't justify paying $175 for it. Um, you know, that, that's like once again, that's a, that's a personal preference. Another thing is if you don't have the money, because um, Melissa Data they charge you like a penny a name or so, um, and then you also have to take into account that once you get this information, you've got to upload it to, to click to mail And, Brad, that's what you're asking about the um, who do I use. Um, I use click to to mail out all my postcards. So, number one, you've got to buy your list or create your list in a common delimited file. And then, two, upload it to click to mail and then send that out. So you're going to have costs with your list and then costs with actually mailing. Um, so, you know, if, if you have, if you're kind of constrained on, uh, marketing a marketing budget. Uh, so you know, like I said, if you can only afford a list of 500 people, then do the 500. But the trick is to keep hitting that 500. Do, you know, the, the 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 I guess the um, the phrase, I'll you know, buy until they die. You know, I don't I don't want to wish any ill will, but you know, I, I'm I'm constantly following up with them, and you need to do the same thing. Another free source that you can do is you can, uh, for the free and clears, the out-of-town homeowners, uh, probate, divorce, bankruptcies, and also tax lien. 
go to your courthouse or your county rec uh, recorder's office. I'm lucky. Mine is online. So um, what I've done is, once again, I've written a program that interfaces with that online system, my online system. It doesn't work with that, anybody else's. It's just locally for my market. Um, and I can access this information. And what I do is I cross-check cross the names with what I get from Melissa, Melissa Data or anybody else with what I got from the county just to kind of verify it. Um, I would just much rather you know, spend the money at Melissa Data, get the information, download it, and then upload it. I mean, and then it's done. I don't have to worry about it. Um, so, and the same, you know, like I said, with probate, divorces, bankruptcies. Bankruptcies, they have them at Melissa Data, but you can also go to your county courthouse because all that, uh, the probates, the divorce, bankruptcies, foreclosures, tax liens, that's all public information. And all you need to do is just access it, research it. Um, if, you're, if your county's records are not online, you're going to have to make a trip down to your county office and, uh, and, and get that information. I remember where I had to physically go down. Um, I, thank God I worked, I worked downtown and um, this was years ago, and none of this stuff was online. And I, I, would, I would take my lunch hour. And I would, I would walk about nine blocks, even in the, the dead of cold, uh, to research these names because that's how serious I was, I was about making this my profession. And, you know, come hell or high water, I'm going to get that list and I'm going to mail to them. I'm going to call them. I'm going to do something. So, like I said, these are, these are the lists that I go after, the free and clears, out-of-towns, REOs, expires, 30, 60, 90 days. And then the postcard that I send them, um, actually, I'll actually show you that uh, about in the finding motivated sellers. But the free and clears out of towns, uh, the expired listings, I, I, I typically send that postcard. But the, uh, the 30, 60, 90 day late, um, I don't send any mail because they are getting a boatload of mail um, already because uh, every, every investor is, is mailing them. What I do is I, I, have a, um, I have a person that actually physically goes knocks on the door and uh, physically talks to these people and figure out if, um, what the issue is, uh, let them know what we can do. And, and a lot of times I'll get a, uh, they'll get an authorization to release right there on the spot. So that way they'll fax it back to me and then um, I can call into their mortgage place and, uh, and talk to them about how far they're behind, what, you know, what their payoff is, try to do some type of loan modification, short sale. And you know, as, a, um, as a side note for a short sale or loan modification, there are people out there, other investors, that charge these people, you know, like $1,000. I don't. I, first thing I do, I try to do a loan modification. If I can, then, you know, I, I've just helped somebody. Um, if I can't, then I'll try to do a short sale. And then that's when I'll negotiate with the bank to get a lower price. I'll step in, buy it, use my private money to fund it, and then uh, and not rent it back to them, number one. You've got to get them out. Uh, that's another thing people are telling you. Don't rent to them. Don't ever do that. You need to get them out. And, you need, and if that person asks you, don't. Um, I'm just telling you, don't. Um, and get new, new, new people in there to either buy it or lease option it out. So, you know, th those are the lists that I typically go after. But um, hang on, let me make sure I don't have any, any questions here. Uh, hang on, I've got to expand this. Um, what do I get the 24-hour service that, that's inexpensive? Um, what I do is I have a local phone company that, that uh, it, it's an, it's basically it's all in a, it's an extension off my, my regular phone phone line. And it's just a, um, it, it's a local number. They call, and then I read my recorded message. I don't, I don't do the 1-800 numbers I did. Um, once again, I think, you know, I think you're wasting your money if you're, if you're doing it. Now, let me back up by saying now if you're buying properties in other states, uh, which I, you know, I do, uh, I, I do buy properties. I got a couple of them in some other states, but um, they were through. Only reason I bought them was because they were through friends and family, uh, people referrals. Um, but if you're actively going after properties in other st uh, states, then yeah, you, you know, uh, you can have a 1-800 number, or you can just get a local number. It's just that that just reroutes to your local number. Um, I just think it's more of an expense than. A benefit. Uh, now, you know, there are other people that, out, uh, that are out there that preach having a 1-800 number. Uh, that it boils down to your preference. Uh, you know, I just like to look like uh, um, the average mom and Paul, you know, business just buying and selling real estate. You know, and that's it. Uh, I, I don't want to look like I'm too big. I don't want these 1-800 numbers. That's just like I said. That is my personal preference. Uh, your preference may be something entirely different. 
and you know I, there are a lot of ones um, out there. Uh, I think it's uh, gent gent2.com. I think it is. Um, they offer a uh, 1-800 number service. That you know, I think it's like nineteen dollars a month or something like that. Um, that that that's really not bad. Um, you can go to k7.net. They they have a, a um, it's 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 not an eight hundred number, but it's a free number. It's a phone and a fax, and you can leave your messages and stuff like that on there. So just first thing I would do is I would just check with your local market to see uh, call your local phone company because chances are they'll have something. Um, and you know I used to have. Uh, the mailboxes for press one for such and such property two for such and such property. Um, it's just you know <laughs> there's a lot of involved in in, in editing that. And I I with uh, with uh, recently hiring um, a virtual assistant. You know she makes that a little bit easier on me. But you know you, you just need to check uh, check your uh, your options and see what actually works best for you. Um, you can't see. Oh, okay. With the uh, Marilyn was saying about the uh, the REO on realtors because it doesn't doesn't show the owner. Um, yeah, I thought at one time uh, that that it did. Um, I guess they changed it. But but what I would do is I would just you know like I said, I would just talk to a a local agent and um, and and tell him tell him or her what what you're looking to do and um, and, and then you know don't you. Know, because a lot of times with these agents, they're not allowed to get money under the table. I always have it all paid out on on the HUD. You know, 25% of the option money that I get, and it's just uh, it just says consultation. And uh, now, obviously, you know, I, I've got a 1099 them, um, but th th it's all it's all above board. I'm not trying to to filter anything. Um, it's all on the HUD. They know what they're getting. Uh, and, and if they ask, you know, what's this consultation? Well, hell, you know, he supplied the lead for me. He helped me structure this deal. And and then when they when we when my tenant buyer actually winds up buying this house, um, then they'll get a percentage of, of of that as well. So now with this um, who to target, some of the tips. Uh, like I said, if the uh, let me make sure. Okay. Um, if the area is too large, you need to narrow it down by carrier route. And Melissa Data allows you to do that. Just um, what I would do is I would call an agent um, up there. You're going to have a sales rep for your particular area, your state, your city, um, and they'll they'll work with you. Only mail out. Like in my case, what I did is I had um, I had uh, I typically have anywhere between 3,000 to like 3,500 names that I do. I'm not going to mail out the full 3,000. Uh, there's a couple reasons why you want to only mail out a thousand at a time. One is, you know, obviously it saves you money. Uh, two, uh, you can get feedback almost instant, in instantaneous. So if you change, uh, if you if, if if you do some type of split testing on your postcards, um, you can even break that thousand up. Say 500, you know, canary yellow, 500, you know, hot pink. Same message, different postcards. See which one pulls differently, right? The, uh, the next 500 out of that thousand. Um, or I'm sorry, the uh, out of the, the second thousand, five hundred a different uh, uh, message, a USP unique selling proposition on your postcard versus another one, and then see what type of feedback you get. I mean, there, there's no failure; it's only feedback, and then that's what you got to you know, that's what you got to realize is you, you need to test. And and what I've done is I've already tested this stuff for me, for my you know for my area, and I know it's going to work. Um, in your area as well, just send out that postcard. Send out that that basic, you know, I solve real estate problems, and you'll get a pretty good response rate on that. Um, if you want to try the the letters, the po or the uh, the flyers, um, things like you can try that as well. But the the postcards are extremely easy to use. I mean, hell, they're they're extremely cheap. Uh, and then a lot of times with these uh, mailing houses, sometimes the owner isn't living there, or it, it may not be a a correct mailing address. I would much rather waste a postcard than an actual stamp on a letter. So, and then when you get those when you get those returns back, you can just purge them out of your system. So, you know, and like I said, remember, there's no failure. There's only feedback. Uh, let me ask you if there are any questions thus far. All right, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so, oops. So now, how do you find these motivated sellers? Well, here are things that I actually use, 
in my business, uh, along with postcards and stuff like that, direct mail, you know, you can use bandits. Oh, hang on. Let me uh, move this over. Okay. Sorry about that. I, this uh, control window was getting in the way. Uh, you can use bandit signs. Um, and what you can do is, what, what I've done is I've broken it up into, you know, like three topics. There's a couple of sites that you can go to for bandit signs. Uh, Witness Designs, this is who I used to get all my design or all my uh, bandit signs from. Um, I, I got a, uh, well, all I did, local local sign company, I said, hey, if you want my business, you have to mat, match or beat these prices. And uh, Steve said, we'll beat them. So I go to Steve now. He's local. He's only uh, five minutes from my house. Um, not, you know, not that there was anything wrong with Witness Designs. I mean, um, if you go to, to their site and you click Enter, you know, real estate investor signs, I mean, look at all these signs. You know, we buy houses cash, sell your house in eight days, cash for homes. We buy houses, we take over payments. This is a really good one, avoid foreclosures. I love that one. Um, I like something that's real basic. I love that. We buy houses. I buy houses. It, you want your message to be a real basic, real simple uh, because when they're driving in their car at 25 to 30 miles per hour, you want that message to hit them, and you want your number to stand out. You don't want – I've tried it with the website, and um, we're looking at the, the time that they called with the information. I captured their email address and trying to go back in and research them with the logs within my, um, my host provider. More of the calls came from the uh, from the phone numbers. That's why now you know you you can put your website put your website address on them, but put these at your house and put these you know out on the you know now that's a whole other thing with bandit signs. Um, if you put them out, you're probably going to get a call from the uh, from the litter pol uh, police. So you know just be careful. Usually, what I do is I put them out on a Friday and I pick them up on a on a Sunday. Uh, night or Monday morning. Uh, not so much me anymore. I've got a guy. That's all his. You know, his job is to put these signs out on the weekend for me. Um, but Witness Designs is a pretty good one. Super cheap signs. I haven't bought purchased anything from him, from them. Another way you could do it is you can make your own. Um, and actually, what I'll show you is I'll show you one that I actually made. Now these are the signs that I got from Witness Designs, right? The owner finance. I had it, I, had, I had them, you know, handwrite it, make it look like handwritten fonts. So these are the ones that I would put up um, at my at my houses, and then this is the one that I've uh, handwritten. And the funny thing is, these crappy looking signs. You see how it's all beat up? I even folded them and walked on and drove <laughs> drove my car over a few of them. And I would put these things out, and my uh, my response rate on these on these signs were phenomenal, um, even for buying and selling. Uh, you know, there, there's different schools of thoughts. You know, use handwritten signs when you're selling, and professionally looking signs when you're buying. Health that man. I, I I get I either have my guy handwrite them, <laughs> or or I use or I have Steve. Uh, he he has my handwriting, and he creates my uh, my signs that says uh, we buy houses cash with these dollar signs, and then that that's an old number. Um, I got them going to a different number. Same thing with the, uh, uh, you know, four bedroom, one bath, one and a half bath, rent to own. And then, you know, this is the signs uh, that I placed in the front yard. I actually had a uh, for sale by owner sign right here, uh, for rent to own. Then my number. Same thing. Uh, and, and as I was telling you, when you're making your own, uh, these are thir three foot surveying stakes from Lowe's or Home Depot. And you see the um, here. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You see the, uh, the, the orange here? Th those are those grip right nails. You know the ones that, that roofers use for uh, nailing down tar paper? I use that. And, um, and I, I put those signs up, and I hammer them, and yes, I used to hammer them into the ground. Now Chris does that for me. And, um, and I'm telling you, uh, these signs versus the, uh, the signs that you get from the, uh, from the sign company with the, uh, um, the stakes, you know, those flimsy stakes, these puppies last forever. I, <laughs> I have a sign up right across from Home Depot that lasted almost nine months. And that thing was up, and I got a boatload of calls off that thing. And uh, when that hurricane came through, uh, what was it, a year or two ago, um, with those winds, we had Category 4 winds, I believe, up here. It was, you know, uprooting trees and knocking over signs. My signs stayed in place. Um, they work. They work great. So, you know, if you, if you want to make them, go to uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, get three-foot surveying stakes. They come in a bundle. Uh, your, your foam board, go to Michael's. They have those big foam boards. Cut them in half. Cut them down to a 12 by 18 or even smaller. And like I said, use those grip right nails with the plastic ring, 
and use a black magic marker. Do not use red because red fades. Uh, I've done this, and usually within a week, the red is gone. The black lasts forever. And uh, just put We Buy Houses, call, and then your number. Or um, if you're selling, uh, what, what you could do is, uh, you know, rent to own this house and then your number. No bank qualifying, no owner financing, and then your number. Boom. That's all you need to do. It's real easy, real simple. That's how you make your own. And like I said, that's how, um, that's how I made mine. And then I also have a YouTube video here that shows you, um, let's see, if this thing start playing here. It's probably going to be real slow for you. Uh, I'll... I'll I'll, I'll email you. I'll email you the uh, the link there, so that way you can get to it. And you can actually see uh, one of the professional professional signs that I had made up. And honestly, uh, I mean, I got a few calls, but not like the ones that, from the handwritten signs. So, you know, those are just some uh, some simple ways to create uh, to create them. Business cards. You need to. Uh, business cards are by far one of the best ways to uh, to get sellers calling you. Because what's going to happen is what I do is I make it a, all my contractors. Uh, everybody that that works for me, I, I, I ask them to um, to pass out 25 business cards a day, or tw you know 20 to 25 business cards a day, and then you know I mean honest, you know this is with they they have to be honest about it too. I mean there's really no way to make sure that that they take 25 and they just pitch it. But what's going to happen is I have them mark their name um, on the on the corner of the business card, so that way if somebody calls, I go, what's the name of the person there that referred you? So if they call me and if I'm if I buy their house, well that person's going to get either a five hundred or a thousand dollar referral fee from me for passing out my card. So I try to make it a, a little bit of an incentive for them to actually pass this out. The business cards that I use are these hundred dollar bill business cards, and these things I'm telling you they work amazing. People hold on to these things for years. They look like a real hundred dollar bill. Um, I've had I, I I would just purposely drop them in shopping markets uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know and uh, you would see people it, it's funny they they would look around and then walk over put their foot on it and then kick it off towards the side or drag their foot with it and they think because they think they they found a hundred bucks and they pull it up and you can just see the look on their face where it you know, it just it's not a hundred. But here's the cool thing: they take the cards and they stick it in their pocket. And I actually had a, I actually had a, several deals from it. So they, they work extremely well. So, you know that site. Um, and as and like I said, make it a goal to pass out 20 business cards a day. Ads uh, go go to Craigslist back page and just post your ad. Sell your house as is, uh, at a fair price on the day of your choice, and then your number. And then visit online. If you want to put other stuff in there, um, you can because it, it's 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 a bigger media. So that way you can get more exposure um, to this. A, a big thing that I've done lately are, are uh, seller squeeze pages. And this is a system that I created uh, that where, here, let this thing load up. And what I've done is I've noticed I've had a really good success rate because I added this audio in here. So when it first boots up, hang on a second, it's uh, taking kind of long here. I, I've got my speakers off. But when it first boots up, it actually it's me talking. And then they opt into my form. And then here's the cool thing. So once they opt in, it, it redirects them to this thanks page, this thanks.php page. It starts reading the sales letter. When I refresh it, the audio has gone, right? You notice the audio? And then the other thing that's pretty cool is if they come back to this URL, it redirects them to this thanks page. So they've already opted in. I don't want them to opt in again. So... I, I just make it real easy. I get away the audio, and then in the autoresponder sequence, I follow up with them. My autoresponder sequence is I'll send the message out immediately saying, thank you for filling in your information. And by the way, here's a seller's form that if you can, go ahead and fill this information out. And um, here, let's see if I'll show you these sellers. Hopefully this is right for them. I just, let's see here. Yeah, and then once again, it's audio. And um, hang on, let me try to pause that here. And it just simply says, I have a script that I read and, and encourage them to fill in their information. And it, it's, it's pretty damn cool when you get the uh, motivated sellers filling this stuff out and getting back with you because these are the, that deal that I told you uh, that I got, uh, the house is worth about 100 or 300,000, 190, that came from that. Um, and I'm telling you, the audio 
on that web page. I've, I've, I've tested it both ways, without audio um, and then just the plain Jane web page. The audio really outperforms, outpulls the, uh, um, the plain one. Now, I'm going to try video next. Uh, just what, what I'm going to try to do is I've got a green screen, and I'm going to uh, uh, have some, uh, some news footage back behind me, like foreclosures, bank, you know, bankruptcies, um, just letting them know that, hey, I buy houses, I can help you. And I'm going to try that. I'm going to split test that as well, and you know, I'll, let, I'll let you know how, how that goes. Um, another thing you could do is drive your neighborhoods looking for vacant homes. You know, you need to, uh, what you should do is you should get the address. You should write them down. So um, if you're out and about, I'm constantly, constantly writing um, phone number or uh, addresses down, phone numbers down of vacant homes. And um, now if, if it is a for sale by owner sign in the front you know, yard and it looks pretty run down, pretty beat, you know, beat up, you know the ones I'm talking about, overgrown grass, mail um, com coming out of the, uh, the mailboxes, you know, papers. Now that's the one that I do call on because they, I know they're motivated. Um, They've got a house. It's they're probably getting fined from the city. They're, they either have a mortgage, a low mortgage, uh, taxes on it. They need to get that property sold. So I will call on that one, and I'll call right there on the spot. Now, the for sale by owner ads, I will not call in the paper, um, just because you know, like I told you, I've had pretty bad experience with that. Um, if you have no money, I put this in here just for you know. You can search uh, the newspapers for sale by owner classified ads. Another thing you could do is. Get it. Get their number. Go to anywho.com. Do a reverse directory, reverse lookup on that number, and see if you can find their uh, their mailing address, and then send them a postcard. I would much rather do that than talk to them on the phone because the psychology of it, you know, you calling them as opposed to them calling you. I, I just uh, it it, <laughs> it puts you at a much higher rung if if they call you and you ask these 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 questions. Um, to, 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 to figure out if their house qualifies. Um, so, you know, I put that in there. Magnetic car signs, I've done that. I've actually had those. And then you can go to witnessdesigns.com. They have magnetic signs um, that you can put on your, uh, your car. Go there, order them. They're like $30 uh, a pop, I believe. Um, I actually had, a, I believe it was a competitor that actually stole, uh, took them off my car, which, you know, it's not a big deal. I'll just, you know, I, I have some more. Uh, I, I've even uh, lettered uh, the side of my uh, my work van that my contractor drives, and um, I, and I also have uh, on the back of my uh, the car that I drive for for me and the family, I've got that letter with just letters that I uh, I went up to uh, Staples.com, you know Staples.com, or just go to your local Staples or Office Max, and get those um, white vinyl letters and just put We Buy Houses Cash, and then your number, and I get um, off that van that little beater van that I've got. I'll get about uh, two or three calls a week. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. A lot of times I'll just, um, it's hell to look at, but I'll drive that thing up to like a Walmart or something, I'll park it in the parking lot. Now, I'll physically go in um, and shop, but, you know, my shopping <laughs> is usually about a couple hours um, to get a call. So they, they, work, they work extremely well. Um, bird dogs, you know, everybody that you talk to, flap your lips. You know, tell them what you're doing. Tell them that you're a real estate investor. You buy houses. I have private money in order to buy these houses, and uh, just tell everybody that 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 you uh, that you know you're an investor. And an example, I just recently, just this week, a, a guy called me up. He saw my van. Um, I was driving around. We were getting some supplies because um, my contractor, a couple of them were off sick, and then Rick needed my help. And so we went up Home Depot, picked some stuff up. On the way back, this guy calls me. He, he's actually uh, he does tree work. Asked me if if I needed any tree work. I said. I don't have anything, but if I, if I have anything, I'll definitely call you. And I said, oh, by the way, since you're out and about, if you know of any vacant houses that would benefit me, that, that, that you look like that, that's been run down, call me. Well, he called me. Jimmy called me, and I told him I, you know, I'd offer him a referral fee of uh, $500 to $1,000, depending on um, how I buy the house. Um, I said it could go as low, down, as, as, low as $250, depending on how I buy the house. And here are, the, uh, here are some of the pictures. Uh, shoot, where are they? Here are actually some of the pictures from this house here that I just I, I just went out and um, I, I took them today actually. I just finally finally got around to um, <laughs> looking at this house. Now he told me this house the the owner I called the owner he told me the house is worth eighty. 
Well, it's not. It's only worth fifty. So you know, you need to do. I, I know the area. I know that that house wasn't worth eighty. I know what it's worth because I, um, I, I own a property on that street, and um, you know, he told me it was worth eighty. And I just, you know, you, you don't call anybody a liar. You just take the information, and I'll tell them I'll go out and take a look at it. Well, you know, you get out there. Everything up here, up at the top, was rotted. The inside, I mean, look at the front porch. It's getting ready to fall off. The, the, the concrete's all busted. The back is even more um, in dire need. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a three-family, but the way that they have everything structured, it only has two furnaces. All the copper's been stolen. All the electrical wiring has been stolen. The walls have been broken out. Uh, the copper's been taken out. Um, you know, I've got, as you go, you can probably, I only took a couple pictures because my camera died. You know, all the, uh, the rotting on, on the truss and everything. Now, the kitchen on, on the first floor, it's not too bad. I mean, I, believe me, I, mean, I, I buy them. I buy them that they look like this. And I usually, that's the backyard. There's a bunch of crap. It's going to take about $800 to clean all that up. That's just showing you all the copper and every, or the, uh, the wiring was <laughs> gone. And, uh, oh, yeah, and the, uh, the soil stack, it's, it's cracked. It's cracked here and it's cracked there. So all that's got to be replaced. All, all this plumbing. Every, every bit of plumbing needs to be replaced in this house. You know, the bathroom, <laughs> I won't even show you what's in there. Uh, and then, that, you know, that's cracked. I mean, it's, it's just in pretty bad shape. And um, long story short, he was asking, the owner was asking, um, he was initially asking 15. Um, I told him, uh, then, he, then, he, then, he, then he drops down to 10, then he drops down to 8, and then he dropped down to 5. Without me even, you know, it's, I'm just listening, letting this guy talk, and then I just said, uh, even before looking at the property, I said, I'll, I'll give you $2,000 for it, and, and, and um, I didn't know it was in that bad a shape, and I said, obviously, it's all dependent upon, you know, what I, what I figure out, and everything is just bad in this house. It needs a new roof. All the trusts are, are rotted. The, uh, the decking on the roof is, is gone. The fascia board's all gone. The front porch, the concrete, uh, the, the foundation shifted. I mean, what, everything you could think of, this house needs. It needs close to about forty-five thousand dollars worth of work, say forty, and um, this house is only worth fifty. So there's only a ten thousand dollar. It's not even. I, I call him back up. The only thing that's worth salvaging in that house are the furnaces. Um, so you know, just with anything that you do, bird dogs, any deals that you do, just you know, do it with due diligence. Check it. Uh, make sure that you know it is what it is. Don't go off and, and buying. I, I see people. Um, I, I just uh, got a hold of a guy that um, he did a deal sight unseen, and um, oh my God, man, it, it was sandwiched in between two apartment complexes, pretty bad apartment complexes, by the way, and um, on a major street, and he he had this house listed for almost two years, and um, I showed him how to do a lease option, and um, he he was able to lease option it uh, roughly about 20 days later. But, um, you know, he, he bought this house sight unseen, and he dumped a lot of money into it, and he was actually getting ready to, to get a divorce um, from his wife over this thing. I mean, none of this is worth that, you know. So, obviously, just do your due diligence on this stuff. Internet, Craigslist, Backpage. A lot of you guys already know what Craigslist is. Um, Backpage, the same thing. Um, here, I'll, let me load up Craigslist here. That's taking forever. So you know you go to Craigslist and you can search for um, whatever you know whatever uh, city that you're in, state that you're in. You know you could do keyword searches and stuff like that. And and some of the uh, here, let me see how it came up. Uh, so the software that uh, that was ta that was briefly discussed was this, was this lead generating software that that I wrote. And what this thing does is it it, it goes out to Craigslist and Backpage. And right now it, you you can't differentiate between the two, whether it's a Craigslist ad or a Backpage ad. The, the newer version, you can. But what you can do is you can search by any category, real estate for sale, Alaska, hit start, and then all the results are going to be returned here. And the other cool thing is you just click on it, and the results show up here, where you can just double-click on it, and it loads this window up. So it shows you what it is, and if there's an email address associated with it, well, you can mail, mail them right from the software. Or the other thing you could do is you could just select all of them, um, you know, select all, unselect it, or just select a few of them and hit mail. And that's what the software does. And, and, and the newer version, uh, I've got a little drop-down box that shows you Craigslist, Backpage, Kijiji. And then there's like, I'm, uh, I had a couple other requests for commercial stuff. 
But I don't think I'm going to do commercial, um, just strip, strictly for the fact that I'm in the single family, and it, it's going to help me in my business as well. Um, so I use that software to, to do that. Uh, some of the tips, if you have no money, use flyers. You, now, if you have no money to, to, pay, you know, to, to mail these things out, you've got to walk the neighborhoods. You've got to, you know, you, maybe you can get a friend, uh, you. Um, this is what I did. I had uh, nobody that, that when I got started, um, everybody told me I was crazy <laughs> for doing it. Um, I, I just pounded the streets. I would go out one Saturday morning and I would pass out. I would take a stack of uh, like 500 flyers and I would pass every single one of them out. Um, regardless, you know, whether it snowed or rain, I was out there. Uh, that Saturday was my day to do my marketing. Same thing with the door hangers, bandit signs like I showed you up before. You make them. Business cards, get them, um, or you can make them. I prefer if you don't make them because they look kind of cheesy, kind of crappy. Uh, you can tell the ones that are made and then the ones that you buy from a kit. Um, you know, don't don't pass them out. I, I'd rather see you. I mean, there, there's even some free online business cards places where you, you can get them for free. Bird dogs, um, once again, just flap your lips. Let everybody know what you're doing, you know. Everybody. Uh, the The... The meter guy, the mail person, um, the, uh, uh, people. I mean, people that are. I, I, I even talk to uh, people that are treating the lawns on the streets. I let them know, and I give them a business card, and I go, and if you know, obviously, if you if, if I buy something, then I'll give you uh, anywhere from a two hundred to a thousand dollar, two hundred and fifty to a thousand dollar referral fee, depending on how I buy it. And um, and uh, I'm telling you, you, you get co calls constantly, and you're going to constantly keep your pipeline full of deals. And then um, how often – now, hold on. Let me make sure. I want to make sure that you guys don't have any questions. I know it's 1.20. I only have a few more minutes, and um, hopefully you guys will hang on with me. Um, is the software free? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I sell that separately. Um, uh, you know, maybe I could – I don't know. Maybe I could work out some type of deal or something. I don't know. Um, all right, so how often to, uh, to mail? Well, the free and clears, you want to mail, the, uh, the, the media that I use is the postcards and the frequency, you want to hit them at least eight times per quarter. So every three months, you know, you're, you're sending them something uh, in the mail. So, you know, you could do two, month, you know, uh, two pieces of mail, two pieces of mail, two pieces of mail, and something in between there. Um, now, it doesn't have to necessarily be a postcard. It could just be, you know, the postcard or, or, or maybe a call or something like that. The same thing with the out-of-town homeowners. Um, it falls in the same thing, the same category, um, postcards eight times per quarter. The expired listings, this is something differently. Because it's expired, um, they may be thinking about relisting um, with an agent or a new agent or their current agent. So what I'll do is I'll just send out even a, a, a postcard um, right before it uh, expires. And, um, and it, it's either that one or I've got an expired listings postcard. I usually get pretty good success rate with the one that I showed you today. Um, and I hit them. I hit them eight times. And it says bi-monthly because for that first month especially. Now, it tapers off after the second month because usually they usually do something within the first couple weeks. So, you know, you, know, you need to hit them and you need to hit them quick. Now, with the expired listings, uh, well, like I said, I don't leave anything. I don't mail anything. Um, not to expired listings. I'm sorry, to the 30, 60, 90 day late. I don't send them any mail. Um, I have guys that actually knock on the door, um, that they physically knock on it. I give them a list. I get the list from, like I told you, melissadata.com. Get the list. They go out. Uh, they, they, they set up their own schedule. I've got some guys that work on Saturday, night, Saturday mornings. And I've got another uh, lady that, that uh, works on Thursday, Friday nights. Um, so, you know, obviously you, you need to tell them to be careful because some of the areas, and I tell them, if you don't feel comfortable going into the area, just, you know, don't do it because your safety is more important than you making a few bucks. Um, so, I, you know, they physically knock on the door. They talk to them. They try to, uh, try to you know, get more information about their property, um, about how much they're behind and stuff like that. And then if they get no response, if nobody answers or if somebody's in there and they don't answer, then I'll, I have a, a, a one-page uh, flyer that I leave behind. And... Um, and I get pretty good success rate with that. Now, typically, a lot of these de de deals are, are um, like either a subject to deal where if I could bring it current, then I will. Um, if not, if they're kind of upside down, um, then I'll go ahead and uh, try to negotiate a, a short sale with them. Uh, and then the last thing are the signs. 
frequency. I, I said I know it's under this how often to mail, but you know these are the the lists that that I typically do, and I also forgot the um, uh, the Craigslist and back page in here. Uh, but signs, I usually have uh, Chris usually puts out 70 to 90 signs per week, and then when I have a house for sale, that pretty much doubles. So I, I never place ads in the paper. I think they're like I said. I think uh, me personally, you know, some people may may argue. I, I think you're wasting your money. I I would much rather see you take that take that 80 to 100 to 150 dollars. And, and put that in on um, on signs, ban the signs or some type of marketing campaign because I think you're going to get a much better, um, or even or even you know pay that for a uh, for a website. You know I think you're going to do much better if if you do that. So, um, all right now what I've got is I've got another poll for you guys and I want to make sure let me make sure first that there are no questions. It looks like my computer's kind of kind of getting kind of slow. Hopefully, let's see. Thing is getting real slow. Okay. Um, will there be a day? Will there be a replay of this uh, webinar? No. Uh, no replay. Um, well, actually, it, it'll be available um, in in like certain members area um, stuff like that. Uh, where do we get one? I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Robert. <laughs> so. Um, let me hang on a second. Let me scroll back here to my poll here, and then I want to ask you this one last poll. Um, what do you guys? Hopefully, you guys can see that. What are you having issues with? Is it finding motivated sellers, deal structuring, or money to fund your deals? If you can v vote that and let me know, because what that'll do for me on uh, on next webinars um, and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll be able to kind of help you fine tune. Oh, look at that! Seventy-three percent finding motivated sellers. Wow, deal structuring, money to fund your deals. Thirty-six percent. That, that's funny because with the um, the finding motivated sellers, that that's a big part too. But another big part to this equation is um, is having the deal, the money to actually fund it. So um, I'll actually do a, a webinar on that. So that way you can kind of get an idea um, what you need to do, who you need to be going after. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the poll now. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I'm going to say five, four, three, two, one. All right, so the poll is closed. I'm going to share the results. So it looks like 71% finding motivated sellers, 29% deal structuring, and 36% funding your deals. See, you know, it, it's it should go really. The order should go finding uh, finding uh, private funds for your deals and then uh, motivated sellers, because the the, the money is really important uh, to this equation. If not, if if, if not, it, it, it's it's first. For both of them should be first place finding motivated sellers and money to fund your deals. So, yeah, the deal structuring is is pretty easy, especially if you come across uh, you know the type of person that that can speak. You know, pretty intelligently about what you're trying to convey. Uh, number two, you know, the, the that they can trust you, that they like. You know, people do business with people they like and trust. So, you know, just make sure that you know with the deal structuring that you, you come across like that. Don't be pushy. I don't. There are a lot of other people out there that that you know try to find the hot buttons and all this other stuff. And I don't know. I, I'm I'm not like that. I just I go and I go. You know, hey, this is what I can do for you if if, if this helps. Then let's do business. If not, you know, I, I leave it with a question, open-ended question. Would it be okay if I call you within a month or two? And they, you know, 99 percent of the time, they say yeah. So you know, just always leave it like that. And what I want to also show you is, if anything about this webinar, I want you guys to have a five-step action plan that you need to do. That you need to do now, um, as soon as you hang up, or when you get off, or go home. You know, you, you need to determine what market you're going to be going after. Are you going to wholesale properties? Or are you going to rehab them? Are you going after sellers with double house payments? Uh, you know, lease options, expired listings. Are you going after probates? You need to determine your market. This is the first M is the market. The second thing, next, you, you need to compile your list of motivated sellers. You can do this by either going to melissadata.com or talking to a real estate agent or going to your, your if, hopefully, if you have a, an auditor, uh, that's online, you can get all that information from them and then you know compile your list. And then the third thing you need to do 
is you need to determine what your message is going to be. So what I would do is I, I would just take, take what I have, and, I, and, and I'm telling you, this works extremely well. Sell your house as is at a fair price on the date of your choice, and this is the second M, your message. The fourth thing you need to do is, um, I, well, shoot, I wonder, it's 1.30 now. I hate to take up all your guys' time. I want to make sure that, okay, would it, uh, you guys want me to show you uh, click mail real quick? Just type in yes or no on here, <laughs> just so I can, uh, okay. All right, I'll show you quick mail real quick. Let me uh, let me finish up. Uh, I'll, I'll use uh, I use clicktomail.com for all my mailings. Upload your list to this site or something similar, um, or you can do the mailing yourself. I recommend do not do the mailing yourself because it is a pain in the ass. I have been there, and I have done that, and I will never go back to doing that. Don't ever do it, please. Just you know, make that promise to me right now. Don't don't do that. And the last thing is next, follow up with them on a continual basis. There is an old saying. Follow up either until I buy or they die. And like I said, I don't want to wish ill will on any, anyone, but the saying is it shows you that you need to follow up with them, and you, and you constantly need to follow up with them. So what I'll do is um, uh, let me go to click mail, click to mail, click to mail. Hopefully this thing isn't slow here. Sometimes when I, I, I have a lot of people on this call and, and this thing is, so let me see if I'm on the line. I am. Oh, I'm in. Am I in? I don't think I'm in. Or I don't think I'm logged on. I mean, so let's see. Uh, and th this is a service that, that I use. Um, I use it. Um, I actually, my, my uh, what the heck? My virtual assistant um, has it as well. Yeah, it's, man, this thing is taking forever. Okay. Okay, see that was the last mailing that I did there. So if I go to mail products, mailing online, so what it's going to do is it's going to show you, and it, I actually I bought one house from this mailing, by the way. This was uh, subject to deals um, that, that I won after. I was just testing testing some stuff. It, it's, it's all about testing. I mean, you know, if you think you got a good idea, test it. Um, and if you don't get the results that you think, um, Maybe test it again, and if it's still bomb, okay, then you need to move on to something else. So, I, I you know, it, it's, it's all about testing. There, there's no failure. It's only feedback. So, you know, all I did was I just hit mail, and then you can upload a document or create your own. So I created my own, and you can go and hit, in here and edit this document. So if I edit this document, yeah, this thing is taking forever. So a little template's going to pop up with this uh, with this postcard right here. There we go. I'm just looking to make sure I'm not losing anybody here. And hopefully my computer doesn't crash. Okay. Thing is taking forever here. Um, shoot. Well, the, the click the mail is pretty good. I mean, I, I've been using it for uh, for a number of years actually, and you know, it, it allows you to to go in. Oh, here we go. It allows you to go in to either upload the document or you can just actually edit the document yourself, which it's doing right now. See, and then what you can do is you can just hit next step to, to preview it. Then you have to accept it, and then it allows you to upload your list, and then you can uh, create um, whether you want it send out first class, second class, postcards pretty much first class, and then you can actually select um, the color. I, I always use canary yellow. Um, I, I get a much better response rate with canary yellow. You can try it. The, the yellow, I mean, when you look at the price, yellow versus the white, I mean, you're only talking a couple cents more, um, 50 cents to a dollar. So, I mean, hell, you might as well just do it. Um, you know, it's real easy to use. They have a really good tutorial on here. Actually, what I'll do is um, I, I can actually do a... Uh, at a later time, do another tutorial. Um, actually, I, I've got this in, in a membership site uh, that actually walks you through all the nuts and bolts of um, you know taking the template, uploading it, and, and things like that. So, um, like I said, if you go to clicktomail.com, you can just upload a, a postcard and uh, um, click next. And then, you know, it, as you see up here, it has prepared 
uh, define recipients. This is where you're actually going to define the list of people that you're going to mail to. And that's where you'll either get them from a list of data or you or you're compile your own, upload it, and then it, it's going to say, it's going to have you review, you see this three proof of mailing? It's going to have you review the front and the back, back and you say, yes, I approve it. And then the payment information, um, it's going to require you to, to, to do your, um, your visa, uh, your credit card information. And then uh, as a side note, I would go ahead and send yourself one, so, uh, a postcard, so that way you can see. It's going to remind you, too, when, when that mail was dropped. And, you can, and that's pretty cool about this system is you can define days that you want to uh, drop, this, uh, drop this mail. So, you know, for example, beginning of February, you're going out of town either for, for business or vacation. Um, you know, you want some crew, uh, tickets to uh, to Disney World or something. Um, you know, you can, and you know, you're going to be gone for a week, two weeks. Well, you can drop it like on the fourth week of uh, at the end of uh, February. You can pay for it now, get everything geared up, and then at the fourth week, or even like on the third week, or you know what, or better yet, the second week that you're in um, wherever you are, um, it's going to start to go out. Then you'll notice uh, that those uh, people are going to start calling you the third week by the end of the second beginning of the third week so people start calling so you can gear up your uh, um, your direct marketing campaign that way so and, and I do that quite a bit um, you know I schedule dates out when when I'm going to actually drop these things so um, that's really click the mail is real easy to use real simple like I said I've been using them for years I have never had any issues with them um, I would highly recommend them to anybody um, hang on a second I got a do we get the template like you said you would email it? What, uh, what, what template? Yeah, yeah, I, I can give, I can get that template to you. Because I mean, or you can, the, the template you can just go to click the mail and download it. They have a, um, they have a, a download section where you can do a double-sided postcard, one-sided postcard, flyers. Uh, door hangers, what have you, you can just download it, modify it, take what I showed you, modify it, put that on there, and upload it. It's, I'm telling you, it's real, real, real simple to do.